Hey YouTube, today we're going to be making something everyone loves. Bacon. A lot of bacon actually, 10 pounds worth. So I've got this slab down at Costco. Um, we're going to cut it up in two five pound sections. We're going to season her up, let her soak for about, I think seven days, and then put her on the smoker. But before we do that, we'll make up some rub, and in that rub we'll include some Carolina Reapers. I probably won't use the fresh ones. Um, I've got some dehydrated ones, so we'll make some powder. We'll include that in the rub. And then we'll add her to this bad boy right here, and hopefully it'll turn out good. If not, I don't know what to do with 10 pounds of bad bacon, but I've never really heard of bad bacon, so let's see how it turns out. We'll go ahead and open this thing up and then start, you know, tripping her up and getting her ready. But first things first, we're going to make some rub. So I'll go ahead and turn off the camera and we'll get started with that. All right. So we're going to be making the cure for the bacon, and the cure is basically made out of two main ingredients, and then we'll add a third that most people don't like, but let's start off with the first one, which is salt, good old salt. And then the second one is sugar, in this case brown sugar and white sugar, but we'll get into the, the uh, measurements later. Then the third ingredient that most people don't like to use is this stuff right here, which is curing salt. Um, it's the number one premium number one. Uh, there's two types, number one, number two. I think for this um, application we use number one. And it's basically, I think, sodium nitrate or sodium nitrite. Let me check real quick. Uh, it's sodium nitrite. And it's pre-measured into a mixture of just regular salt and that chemical in a predefined quantity. And, you know, people tell you not to use this stuff and for good reason. It's, you know, carcinogen, I think, technically. Um, there's two reasons why you should use it though, and the main one is that when you're smoking bacon outside, you're going to be smoking in a low temperature, low oxygen environment, so botulism spores can grow really quickly, and that can make you really sick and possibly die, so that's one main reason. And the second reason why you should use this is because it makes bacon taste like bacon. It really does. I've tried it without this stuff, and what you get at the end, it's good but it doesn't taste like bacon. It tastes like, you know, really good roasted pork that's salty and sweet, but you know, it's it doesn't make a good it doesn't make the same BLT. This stuff does. Um, not saying you should eat this every day of your life, obviously in moderation. Um, don't eat a whole 5 pound slab obviously in one sitting, but if you eat in moderation, you should be fine. Uh, one thing to note is this is not the same as Himalayan pink sea salt. So the stuff you see in, you know, your grocery store that you can use all the time, um, it's not the same. People tell you it's the same. It is not. This is a chemical that's predetermined and you should follow the instructions very carefully on this stuff because in high quantities this can actually be poisonous. Um, so there's some instructions on the back. Read it. Basically I think for a five pound slab we'll go with um, one teaspoon of pink curing salt and you know don't go over that. You can go under if you want a little but definitely do not go over. So. Let's get started with this. The first thing that I add in my mix is sugar. And for a five pound slab of bacon, I go with one cup of packed brown sugar with two tablespoons of just regular old granulated white. So that's the first thing. And again, this is for a five pound slab. So that's half of that big slab that we had. Next is one cup of, well actually no, this is a half cup of kosher salt. And in this case, I'm using Morton's and I measured it out. So it's a half cup, and if you measure it by weight, which I think you should because every one of these brands is a little bit different, this one weighs 4.5 ounces for a half a cup of salt. So I find that this mix works pretty well for me. If you buy a different brand, you might want to weigh it out, you know, and adjust as needed. If it's too salty for you, take it down. If, it's, if you need more salt, add more. But this is what I like. And of course, or general poison. Um, <laughs> well, not poison, the curing salt. So this is one teaspoon, and again, don't go over for a five pound slab, we'll just mix that in there. And this is your basic cure right here. I mean, you can go ahead and just put this, you know, mix this up, put this on the, on the pork belly, and make bacon. But most people want a little bit more flavor in there. I also add in two tablespoons, I think, of coarse black pepper. And for this purpose, we're gonna add some reapers. These are dehydrated reapers that I grew. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and grind them up and we're gonna add this much. I don't know how much this really is. It's like a tablespoon and a half of dried ones, but they're kind of 
big. So we'll see how much this turns out to be. So let's go ahead and grind these up. So that looks like a almost a tablespoon. So we're going to see how this works out. All right, I'm going to try to open this thing without killing myself. Oh, wow, and I can smell that from here. This is probably a mistake. <laughs> but wow, that is a lot of reaper. Holy crap. <laughs> All right, so this is our general mix. This is basically what we're going to use. You know, you can add more things into here. I'm actually going to be making two pound, two slabs of five pound, um, two five pound slabs of bacon. One five pound slab is going to be made out of this mixture. The next one I'll make with, you know, some other different things that I know my friends like, um, bay leaves, allspice, things like that. But for this purpose, I'm going to use this as one of the, as our main mixture for the Carolina Reaper bacon. In fact, I might add a little bit more Carolina Reapers just for fun. But so next step, we'll go ahead and cut up those slabs, trim them up, and then we'll go ahead and add these cure mixes and put them in the fridge. So let me turn off the camera and we'll get started with that. Okay, so we went ahead and cut that big 10 pound slab, um, drained off all the wonderful juices that it comes in and my kitchen is a complete mess now, but <laughs> here's our Here's a five pound slab of what's left. Um, the other piece is in the fridge still, but this one has some cleanup to do. Um, one main thing with these slabs of bacon is this one doesn't have any skin on it. So sometimes you'll get some with the skin. If you get some with the skin, you'll probably want to take that off. Um, you might want to just ask your butcher to do that or just opt for the version that does not have skin. It's a lot easier and saves you a lot of time. Um, next thing you want to look for is like this weird like film looking stuff. Um, it's like lining I guess off the stomach or whatever it is. You want to make sure you take that off and sometimes what I do is I poke the knife under here, get it started, and I'll take a tissue like this, just a regular old paper tissue, and just rip it off. Just like ribs. So basically you see it comes off real cleanly there, you can see the meat. Um, just kind of do that. And sometimes you'll get some meat with it, but you know what, just tear it off. It's not worth it. Um, if you see any extra fat, things like this, I usually try to take them off just because, you know, it doesn't really add anything. Just basically stuff that's going to render out anyway, so you might as well not grease up your smoke or your grill. So again, there's more of it right here. See this? It tastes good, but it's not... Not the best looking thing in the world. So, like that stuff you can leave on there. Any of this little silver skin as you see here. Just tear that off. And you keep doing this until basically the rest of the meat looks kind of like this, just really nice. And you know, a little flecks of flat like fat like this are okay. Um, put this knife away. Basically the other side is going to look like this, just really clean skin. And you know you can start seeing what looks like bacon on this side. Let me see if I can get a shot of that. So, you know, that's usually what you think of when you see bacon, when you cut across there. That's a slab of bacon. Some people also go ahead and trim off these little bits and things like that. I just leave them because to be quite honest, you know, it's not worth the time to waste all of this. If it goes in the smoker and it gets dry, you just cut it off afterwards. When you're making bacon, you can use it to, I don't know, season beans or whatever you want to use bacon scraps for. But um, at this point, let's go ahead and we'll show you how to season this, uh, not well, season it up with the rub that we made. And in this case, we're using the Carolina um, Reaper mix. Let me clean up the kitchen a little, get rid of all these little gross scraps, and we'll go ahead and get started. All right. Okay, so we're back, and as you can see what I've done here is I've just basically put the bacon into a Ziploc bag, or the pork belly at this point, since it's not bacon yet. 
And what I found is um, usually using the, what is this, the jumbo size um, storage sliders. This is a 2.5 gallon one. Works really well. So I use these a lot or I'll use one of the food saver bags, one of the really big ones. And basically you'll see a lot of people saying just, you know, take the rub first and then rub it into the meat. Um, I've really found no difference to be quite honest if I do it this way. So I basically put the, the belly in a bag, you know, just take our rub mix that we made and literally dump her in. Okay. So we go ahead and close her up and start tossing her around a little. You want to try to get both sides coated, so this is kind of a fun thing. And you can see like, you know, it's starting to get a little, it's like coated really well. Just think of it like chicken fried steak, just a really massive one, and it's pork. <laughs> so, you know, when you get that done, everything should look like it's fairly uniform. Um, you're going to have a lot of seasoning left in, but I find it's best to just leave that in the bag, because once the meat starts, what's the best term for it? Rendering juices. Um, this all kind of mixes into like a big um, just marinade basically. And what we're gonna do next is go ahead and take some of the air out of the bag, just open the bag back up. Now squeeze out some of the air. And there we go. And what you'll need to do now is put this in the fridge for seven days, uh, anywhere from five to seven days. I find usually if I go seven days, it tastes really good. Um, put this in the bottom of your fridge near the meat cooler. Um, I'm gonna put it into a container like this again So just in case this bag leaks, um, you know, my fridge isn't full of meat juices Second thing is every day you have to turn this so you know try to have this flat in the fridge like this as best as you can and on day two flip it over day three flip it over and keep repeating until you know day seven's over and the reason for that is to make sure that, you know, all of this gets seasoned um, evenly, everything gets mixed out. You know, if there's a big pile of salt here, it'll get mixed off this side. So just basically, um, you have to keep track of it. So when you come home, first thing you do before you feed the dog or the kids or, you know, you know, watch TV or anything, just go ahead and flip your bacon. And we'll come back in about seven days um, and I'll show you what to do next. And after that, we'll go ahead, you know, clean her up, smoke her chiller and hopefully we'll have bacon afterwards and it'll be really hot bacon because all the reapers I added which I'm starting to regret right now anyway um, we'll stop the video here and pick it up when we have set when seven days has okay so the bacon's been sitting in this brine for about seven days I've been flipping it every day um, as you can tell there's a lot of juice in here and what we're going to do now is, what you want to do is basically go ahead and drain out all this juice, take the bacon out, and give it a good rinse. Basically get all of these seasonings and any leftover um, salt granules and everything, just completely wash the bacon off because um, we're going to be smoking this next and we don't want anything to burn. And so as you can see in here, some of the little Carolina Reapers, I don't know if you can see those little red flecks, they rehydrated and there's a lot of them in here. So. You know, hopefully this bacon's nice and hot. We're gonna go ahead and get this cleaned up. I'm gonna put her on the rack and then we'll tell you what to do next. Okay, so the bacon's all um, cleaned up. You know, we poured off all those wonderful, wonderful juices that you know went all over my kitchen. And went ahead and washed her off. So we got off as much of the, you know, the spices and everything off there. Um, at this stage, you can add another layer of cracked black pepper if you want. I'm gonna leave her as is. Uh, one thing you want to do is kind of just take a regular paper towel, like a clean one obviously, and you know, kind of blot her down. Make sure there's much moisture. Um, you take off as much moisture as possible. And the reason for that is you're going to be putting this in the fridge for about an hour. And we're going to try to form a pellicle on the top of it, which is basically just a layer for the smoke to adhere to. It'll help the flavor later on. Um, we're going to be, let's make it weird noises. Um, so you want to blot this down as much as possible on both sides, make sure it's pretty dry, and then put it in the fridge for about an hour. And it's just gonna the fridge is just gonna dry it out a little bit more. And then we're gonna put her on the smoker and we'll show you what happens there. 
Okay, we've got the bacon on the smoker right now. I'm just using my little Weber grill. Uh, this is all you really need to smoke something. Uh, basically, you just want to keep the temperature kind of low. You're not looking to grill this or actually cook the meat down and render it. Um, I usually put the fat side down just because I want all the smoke to deposit on the meat. And I don't really want grill marks on the, um, on the meat side. Uh, you can do it either way, it doesn't really make a difference, I've tried it both ways. But today I'm using a combination of apple and cherry. There's, we're going to see how that turns out. I've usually used pecan or hickory, but today I just felt like trying something different. Sorry for all the noise, we've got a bunch of airplanes and people cutting their grass and traffic outside. So I'm going to go ahead and wait until this reaches an internal temperature of 150, and then we're going to go ahead and pull it. But until then, we'll take an update, um, about an hour or two, and we'll show, show you how it's looking. Okay, so we went ahead and pulled the bacon off the smoker. It took about two hours to get up to 160. I should have pulled it at 150. And the only reason you want to pull it at that, at that temperature is because uh, if it starts getting too hot, it starts pulling apart like, you know, pulled pork or brisket. So it gets really tender. The fat starts rendering out too much and you don't want that. So 150 is the ideal temp. If it goes over a little than that, that's fine. Um, basically at this point, we're gonna have to let her rest. I know right now you just want to slice into her and start making some BLTs, but Trust me on this one, it's gonna taste a lot better the next day. So what you have to do is wrap this up in some foil once it cools down, let it cool down to you know about room temp. Um, wrap her up, put her in the fridge uh, for about another day, and then you can slice it up and make some bacon sandwiches or do whatever you want with it. If you cut it off right now and fry it, it's gonna taste good, but it just doesn't taste as good. And I don't know how to explain it, but I've tried it before in the past and you have to let it rest. Um, so trust the random person on YouTube and just take my advice and let it rest for another day I know it's hard. You've done all this work. You've waited seven days and now you've waited an extra two hours Now you're gonna have to wait an extra day. So just go ahead and let this um, You know let it cool down put it in the fridge and you know tomorrow We'll come back and we'll slice it up and we'll start trying this and hopefully this Carolina Reaper Reaper bacon turns out pretty good. Otherwise, I have five pounds of this stuff that I've got to get rid of but it's bacon How bad could it be so? We'll see you tomorrow. All right, so it's been one day and we've got the bacon out. It's been chilling for 24 hours. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and slice it up and then fry up a piece and see how it, um, how it tastes. So this is the Carolina Reaper bacon. I'm just gonna take a few slices here and show you what it looks like on the inside. Um, this is a really long process, especially when you just have a knife. If you had like one of those little slicing machines, it would go a lot faster, but uh, it's, it is what it is. You have to just kinda, I'm gonna take off a cute few cleanup cuts here. So you're going to see if some of these slices don't look too great, but this is just to kind of square it up. And I really need to sharpen my knife. <laughs> but as you see right here, um, see how it's that nice pink color? Um, got a nice little bit of smoke here. And I think most of this pink is actually from the sodium nitrite, but, you know, it smells really good. And I'm looking forward to trying a piece of this, so let me slice off a few more pieces. Probably should have used the bigger knife for this, but oh well. So, you see that's a pretty hefty thick cut there. That's probably a little bit too thick, but uh, it's looking really nice. Looks like bacon, and we're gonna see how it tastes. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish cutting up the rest of this thing, and then we're gonna fry up a piece and see how it tastes. All right. Okay, so we went ahead and sliced up the bacon. You may be wondering how much bacon you actually get from that little slab. So, let's see. Get that, that. You get a lot of bacon, let's just put it that way. So, um, I like to save them these little um, food saver bags. They're really cool to do that. I just basically go ahead and slice them up into, you know, packages that'll last about a week. And then um, throw them in the freezer. Um, I don't need a lot of bacon, despite what it looks like. Um, so I'll just throw them in the freezer, take out a pack whenever I want, and you know, just kind of dethaw it, and then 
just munch on that for breakfast with some friends or, you know, basically I'd buy my own, by myself. So anyway, we're gonna go ahead and fry up a few slices. I cut off about, let's see, cut off a few sample pieces, these three pieces right here. This little end piece right here is the, it's kind of the end. So I know that one's gonna be a little bit salty, but I just wanna get rid of it. So these pieces are two nice ones. So I'm gonna go ahead and fry those up. And we're gonna go ahead and do that right now, actually. So let me stop this and get over to the frying pan. Okay, so the proper way to do this is with cast iron. Um, you can use anything else you want, but I love using this. I start my bacon off in kind of a cold pan. Well, not really cold, but just slightly warm. And then I'll raise the temperature. And that way I find it keeps it from burning. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put these in there. And we'll come back when those are nice and golden brown and we'll give it a taste. Can you hear that sizzle? No. Okay, we can see that the bacon's almost done. I like mine really crispy, so I'm gonna let it go for a little bit longer. Um, then go ahead and try this. So this is the Carolina Reaper bacon. Um, made these slices really thick, so they took a while to cook. But as you see, they rendered off a lot of fat. It's all bacon grease. Uh, I know pe some people use that. I'm not going to though. Uh, let's see. So this is the little end piece that I assume is going to be really salty just because, you know, obviously it's on the end and all that salt was on there. So we're going to grab this piece, let that go a little bit longer. Gonna go ahead and put that on the plate. And of course, I missed the plate. We're gonna let that drain off for a little bit. So there they are. So when this cools down, I'll give it a try. Okay, so the bacon's cooled down enough so where it won't scald my mouth when I try it. So I'm gonna go ahead and try a piece and see how it tastes. Hopefully it has some heat, but hopefully not too much. So, here we go, Carolina Reaper bacon. Mm. Definitely tastes like bacon. Getting a little bit of heat from the Reapers. Not a lot, but enough to let you know it's there. I guess I could have added more. I think in the next batch I'll probably add probably mm, another five or so. Or you can tell a little bit of taste on the outside, but there's not a lot that penetrated into the bacon itself. But it's still pretty good. I'd make this again. It's got a nice little flavor. A little bit of a kick. Not too much though. So I guess technically you can use the amount of reapers I did, which was just basically a little tiny handful of dried ones, and you wouldn't have any problems with this. That is if you like heat. But right now, I'm going to go back to enjoy my bacon, and you guys have a good one. Mm -hmm. Ah, now I'm sad. <laughs>